John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the United States, has been taken from us by an act which outrages decent men everywhere. Six decades later, how do we assess the legacy of the man who was president for only a thousand days? And did we ever get the whole story about what happened that day in Dallas? Joining us now, presidential biographer and historian Craig Shirley, and also joining us is the author of Ask Not, historian Tom Avitabale. Welcome to you both. Tom, you, you researched that era of American government and politics sure. extensively for your book. So what is mm -hmm. something that people didn't quite know or appreciate then about the forces kind of swirling around Kennedy? Well, it's a, li it's a long list of suspects. And if you go down the conspiracy road, there's ample, ample things to look at uh, from the Bay of Pigs, the CIA, uh, the whole Cuban issue, uh, the his making nice with the Russians. I mean, Kennedy was someone who understood how bad war was, and he was a new generation. He wasn't the old uh, guard who, uh, you know, survived World War II. He brought a whole fresh new uh, perspective to the world, and his idea of peace and his idea of reaching out and settling things was radical at the day, but he represented the new frontier. He, you know, the torch has been passed to a new generation. Mm -hmm. So all that hope, all, all those lovely ideas, all those utopian ideas died with him in Dallas that day. Craig, so that's, I think, continues a legacy. Craig, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is campaigning, obviously, for a shot at his, his uncle's old office. And he's been making some very interesting points about the state of the Democratic Party today. Uh, you, you mentioned Kennedy cut taxes. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure that, that think that he would react to the party that he sees today. Oh, I, I, I don't know if he, he would walk away from it because he was a born Democrat, but he'd be very dismayed by the direction of the Democratic Party. Mm. He was not a radical. In fact, he was very, you put him on the political spectrum, he was very conservative. I just, I only have just a few seconds left, and I'd like to get Tom in just for, you know, some closing thoughts uh, as we wrap up the segment. Well, I, th I think, well, you know, 60 percent of the American people today don't trust the results of the Warren Commission. I think it's because we have a strong presen presence of a counter narrative out there in media from films and books and, and tons of things on the Internet. So in that kind of support system for anybody who has an alternate theory, you don't have to go very far to find it. And I think mm. that's why uh, the erosion in the trust in, in the uh, Warren Commission report, because there's a lot of crosstalk out there. And, you know, we learn from the Internet these days. We hardly ever read books, yeah. unfortunately saying that as an author. So, yeah, you're going to have this confusion, this ball of confusion. But in 1993, 80% yeah. of the American public didn't believe the Warren Commission. Today we're at 60 So more, peop more people are, you know, it's kind of, I think it's kind of leveling out. And, of course, one of the things that's so important for us to, to, to mention here as we wrap is the fact that uh, the, the rhetorical contribution that he made, um, his oratory, the way that he addressed the American people, still so incredibly powerful all these, all these decades later. Historians Craig Shirley and Tom Avitabali, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And stay with us, folks. The second hour of America Right Now begins right now.